I don't know if the camera is picking up on it, but I have like this. Um, I'm calling it a stress rash. Um, <laughs> like every single video but it really has been a minute um, since I last posted. Um, I've been in London for just over a year now. I had my one year anniversary since leaving Sydney so I thought it would be a really good time to give a little life update. Um, so yeah and it's mainly for you know people back home like in Sydney um, and Australia and New Zealand who I don't really get to talk to as often um, and it, as much detail so and I love I love um, just speaking into the camera really so um, I'm about to move flats um, so I'm packing at the moment and I, I personally love watching a moving vlog so I thought it was a really great time to film again um, today is Saturday um, I have moved half of my stuff into my new flat today um, the rest of the stuff all the big stuff will be tomorrow Sunday and then Wednesday, I'm going to Turkey with two of my girlfriends um, for the Easter break. So it's a very hectic time at the moment. Um, I, I don't know if the camera is picking up on it, but I have like this. Um, I'm calling it a stress rash. Um, it's certainly not a hickey. I wish it was a hickey, um, but it's not. It's just like a combination of stress and the water in London is trash. Just gonna say it, it's horrible and um, it really does affect your skin like you really do have to look after your skin a lot so anyway it's Saturday um, I got my nails done especially for Turkey so I've got um, little sparkles and little evil eye um, just when I got my lashes done um, they are giving Essex sorry they are giving Essex but <laughs> I actually kind of like how like they look super dramatic now and a little bit like I'm obviously a lot you know fake um but i like how they look in like a week or two and they're sort of a, a few of them a few of the lashes have like fallen out and it still looks very wispy and nice so um i go dramatic at first and then it looks um a lot more natural later on um so yeah just a very busy morning um and luckily my housemate is on holiday at the moment because the place is like an absolute tip like i've brought everything out into the lounge in anticipation of moving it tomorrow so the flat is looking really really messy but I'll kind of give you a bit of tour um obviously don't want to give away too much about like where I'm living but now that I'm moving it doesn't matter too much um and basically I wanted to give you a bit of a life update as well so while I'm packing I'll kind of update you on what I've been doing for the past year um in London and my whole experience so let's get to it so this is the state of the living room at the moment. Um, it's such a beautiful apartment. Um, the view is just really, really stunning. I'm um, going to miss that for sure. Uh, my new place is just up the road, really, um, but it's not going to have this kind of view. It's not really um, an apartment. It's more like a house with a really beautiful garden, so I'm excited for that. Um, but I have two big IKEA bags that have like my office stuff and all my shoes. Um, I took all my clothes over this morning um, in my suitcases um, when I went to get the key. And then I bought this mannequin um, last week because I'm going to the Eras tour in August and I want to make a costume. And I was like, I need a mannequin for that. So um, got a second hand one off uh, Gumtree. And then my new room doesn't have a bed, so I've ordered um, a bed frame that will be coming after I get back from Easter holiday. But um, it was just easier to get the mattress delivered here first, so that I have a you know a mattress to sleep on when I move in, um, and then a few other light little cabinets and stuff. So yes, it's a bit of a mess, but um, the only thing I really have to do is pack up the rest of the kitchen and then also the bathroom and this is the state of the bathroom at the moment so um, i've emptied all of the um cabinets um just like you know how when you go traveling and you're like i can't pack my toothbrush until you know i've used the toothbrush tomorrow morning so before i leave so i ha can't there's like a few things i can't really pack yet um, and then this was my room again, very, very nice room, very spacious. Um, this was my desk. Oh, 
Um, that's all packed up now. Um, this is the view from my room. Yeah, I'm definitely going to miss it a lot. Um, and then I just have like, I bought this um, really beautiful like vintagey mirror off Facebook Marketplace from like a Kiwis in London, the f Facebook group. Um, I've got my computer monitor. Um, I bought this really cute light return um, bedside table at like a flea market. Um, so looking forward to having like a proper sort of space for that um, in my new room. And then there was a built-in wardrobe. There is a built-in wardrobe um, behind those doors. Um, so I've emptied all of that out as well. So there's not too much more to do. It's just like the sheer amount of stuff that I have. Um, have not only that I brought over um, from Australia, but that I have um, since grown is a little bit scary. Just made a quick smoothie because one, I wanted to get rid of all the stuff in my freezer um, before I moved to the new place and two, to fuel the rest of the packing um, of all the stuff in the kitchen. Um, so, bit of a life update. Uh, so I left Sydney um, in March of 2023 and when I think back about like how I had the, you know, the balls to leave Sydney without a job, um, I didn't even have a visa at that point um, because I was too old to get the youth mobility visa. Um, it was, you could apply up until the age of 31, like up until your 31st birthday. I think I was already 32 at that point. Um, and I was hoping to get sponsored, but getting sponsored in my line of work is not easy. I work in marketing and unless you work in a very um, sort of niche sector or you're very high up, like I don't think a sort of regular company would necessarily like um, sponsor someone because it's really expensive when there are a lot of people who have visas or who are locals and they could just as easily um, hire them. But I was hopeful and I also had a um, visa for Canada as a backup. Um, so I knew that like, if, even if it didn't work out um, in London, I could always go to Canada. Um, that being said, as soon as I landed in London, I just was like, oh my gosh, I really, really like it here. I'm going to make it work somehow. And then I think literally within a week of having landed in London, they announced that they were extending the age of the youth mobility visa to 35. And we always knew that that was going to be the case, um, but we weren't sure when it was going to happen. Um, we didn't think it was going to happen as soon as it did. So they said that it would come into effect um, on July 1st of last year. And so at that point, because I was struggling to um, find a job, um, I was like, well, I might as well just go traveling um, for a few months and enjoy this time off and then once I get back um, or once once I'm able to apply for the visa um, it's going to be so much easier to find a job and then that's sort of what happened because I, I, I honestly got really lucky and I basically um, interviewed for a job and I told them that I would be going traveling um, and then applying for the visa um, come July and then I would be back um, in London sort of mid-July and I could start my job then and it, that, those timings work perfectly for them because the role that I'm doing is covering a maternity leave so they knew when this person was leaving um, and it lined up perfectly in terms of timings um, so I felt like I was just like spending so much money in London without really doing a whole lot because um, I didn't have a job at that point um, so I decided to go and do a work away in Albania and Albania is um, below Croatia, I think it's below, um, and it's honestly so underrated. It's probably, um, you know, 10 years away from being what Croatia is now. Um, it's a little bit underdeveloped. Um, it's not hugely touristic, but I think it's really gaining popularity. It's such a beautiful place, like, and I, because I got to stay there for a month, I really got to live like a local in the capital uh, of Tirana, but I also got to travel um, and see a lot of the country and just have the most beautiful hiking locations, waterfalls, rivers, like all of that natural stuff. I've heard the beaches are really beautiful as well. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. 
Um, so a workaway, if you haven't heard, um, is basically you, and they happen like all around the world and there's all types of different workaways and you volunteer, although volunteer sounds extremely altruistic, but it's, you sort of volunteer your time and that could be working on a farm or in a hostel, that's what I did, um, all types of different work or you could be like an au pair and uh, the place like gives you free board and usually meals are included as well. Um, and you work sort of four or five days a week and then the rest of the time you have off to go traveling and exploring and stuff. And it's such a good way to like see a country, um, meet locals and also it really stretches like your your budget um, as well and like your, your, your money goes a lot further because you're not spending it on accommodation um, and food and stuff. So I thought it was just a really, really cool experience and yeah, I won't um, sort of ever forget that. And so basically, when the visa age extension came into effect it was like the on the dot like of midnight on july 1st i applied and i paid for priority which if you can afford it even if you're not in a rush i would really highly recommend um paying the extra money and it's not cheap it's what well, at the time it was like 500 euros to pay for priority it's probably gone up since then because the price of all the visas have gone up um but it just means that your application is um fast tracked and i was sort of banking on i had basically told my new employer that i'll be back um, by a certain time so everything had to go to schedule and you hear all these horror stories of just like you know just human error basically, like of administrative blunders um, of people's applications going wrong. But mine luckily um, went through super smoothly, like super quickly. So I spent a month in Albania and then um, I flew back to London. It was like uh, Sunday and then I had Monday off um, and then I started work on the Tuesday. And again, I was so, so lucky to be able to stay with friends at that point, but I was also having to like house hunt. So I was traveling from like North London to my office, which is in South London, like almost every day, just cause I was, you know, being inducted. Um, learning all the stuff about my new job, trying to find a house. And it was just like the most exhausting, like mentally and physically um, time of my life. I've never slept so deeply every single night for like a whole month, um, but it was so worth it. And I got so lucky I found this apartment within a week or so. Um, and the, again, just the timings aligned perfectly. I moved in and I always knew that I'd have to move around this time because um, my roomie, her husband, now husband, um, is, is going to move to London. He was living overseas. So I always knew that I was um, going to have to leave the apartment because it was kind of a Rachel and Monica scenario. Um, Chandler's moving in. Um, so. I was always mentally prepared for it, but I was like, eh, that's, that's future Maggie's problem. And then the time has just flown and I've had to find a new flat. But again, just got super lucky with timings and I've found this new place just up the road. So I've really liked the location. It's really convenient and very good for like public transport. It's really close to all my friends. Um, so yeah, really, really enjoying it. And um, I hate moving. Well, do I, I mean, I, freaking was in Sydney for 10 years I moved I, I lived in like eight different places so I'm used to moving <laughs> and I'm trying to not be so hard on myself about like how much stuff I do have to move because when I think about it I came over with two suitcases I had a suitcase sent over and then my sister helped me send over like another large box um then obviously I've, I've like made this flat into my home um, as well and I'm kind of just thinking like whilst I want to be a minimalist the way that I feel at home or most at home is being surrounded by stuff that you know brings me comfort and brings me joy so I'm just trying to be kind of mindful of buying things um, for the sake of buying them and like it, try not to be wasteful and try not to be cluttered but also trying to set up a home for myself here if knowing that I'm going to stay for the, at least another year, I want to be, you know, comfortable and I want to, you know, I love, um, yeah, just being surrounded by stuff that makes me feel at home. So trying not to be too hard on myself for having so much stuff just because I remember like, like the stress that I went through when I was downsizing in Sydney, like I don't want to go through that again. So I'm just trying to be 
just ultra mindful of the stuff that I do buy. Um, that being said, like, I'm just trying to do this thing where, like, every couple of months, or even every month, like, I'll go through my wardrobe and I'll sell stuff or give stuff away that I don't wear anymore. Um, I get a lot of, like, samples and things when I, when I order, like, makeup and um, skincare online, and I, um, there's a really cool app. It was just taking off in Australia as I left. It's called Olio. Um, and you can give away stuff for free um, instead of on Facebook Marketplace and it's really popular here so every time I like list something someone will come and pick it up like straight away it's such a cool um, app so nothing goes to waste um, and same with like Vinted um, I don't think I mean I never used it in Australia so I don't know if it has taken off yet but Vinted is like a secondhand clothing app and again it, it just moves so quickly whereas like Depop when I was back in Sydney was you'd list things and they would just not sell like for months whereas everything that I listed on Vinted sells within a day or two the postage process is so easy and buying things on Vinted is really fun as well um, so it's not really so much about making money it's more just like yeah just being more conscious of like the clothes that I buy um, all those sorts of things so trying to keep things relatively minimal but knowing that you know I'm creating a life here and I want to um, enjoy it so um, that's sort of it um, in terms of my life update I'm really enjoying my new job um, I'm really enjoying like the community that I've created for myself in London um, just because I feel like that was what I was really craving the most or really missing the most when I was in Sydney and kind of sadly or ironically like as I was leaving Sydney I had just gotten to know like a lot of my um, colleagues and we had created this really nice group of friends who were a lot more social um, and I just felt like I was just getting into that as I was leaving Sydney and that was like just what I was after whereas like for the past few years in Sydney up until that point I just felt very not lonely like I mean I honestly feel like I wish that I had felt lonely because I feel like I would have tried harder to create a community but I was more just quite isolated I felt like everyone lived in different areas and to see my friends was really difficult whereas in London I really prioritized like where I lived I wanted to be close to all my friends so that I could hang out with them not only like making plans for you know going on trips or going out for meals and all that stuff but spontaneous stuff as well just being like hey who's around who wants to grab a drink who wants to have dinner who wants to come around and, um, who wants to hang out and I feel like um, yeah I just feel I feel like I'm always surrounded by people and it's less of an effort I suppose whereas I and, and everyone who lives in London in metropolitan London um, wants to live the London lifestyle like they want to go out and they want to experience things and they want to do things whereas I feel like I, I kind of felt like and this is no hate to like people with families and, and partners and stuff but in Sydney it really did feel like when you reach a certain age you felt like an immense pressure to have a house and a partner and kids and stuff and I just wasn't at that stage yet so I felt very left out um, in that regard whereas in London like you could be any age and still just like enjoy everything that London has to offer um, yeah so I've really really loved like everything about um, living in London for the most part um, I love uh, you know how close it is to travel like I feel like I've gone to so many like different places in Europe I'm about to go to Turkey um, I love going to gigs like concerts and raves and stand up um, like com the comedy scene here is really great um, there's always shows and it's not like super expensive to get um, even really terrible seats like I don't care like I want to go see lots of like musicals and plays and um, just things like that just is in abundance in London and if you have even the most obscure hobby um, there's going to be something for you um, I guess the downside is that you know everyone talks about how hard the winters are and I think leading up to Christmas was just magical like London was so so beautiful over Christmas and then you're obviously going out socializing a lot going to Christmas parties and 
Um, it was such a fun time and then after Christmas and New Year's everyone's doing like dry Jan, <laughs> everyone's broke after Christmas. Um, it's just grey and drizzly all the time. It's not even the cold either, it's like the days are dark when you leave the house. So I leave for work quite early, like 6 in the morning, it's dark until like 8 in the morning. Um, and then it's dark again by like three or four. So by the time you leave work, it's dark again. Um, and I feel like I was filling my evenings and my weekends with like activities. Like I was going to all these different classes. I was um, going to all these different shows, going to, on day trips around the UK, just trying to like keep myself busy. And then I think in the last two weeks, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like I just felt so homesick. Um, Everyone's saying, you know, just give it a few more weeks and it's already starting to become brighter and stuff um, in the evenings, but it was just, I've never, I hadn't felt that homesick up, up until this point and it was like, yeah, it was really, really tough. Um, really missing like my dog who's with my parents at the moment. I have lived away from home, like from my parents for like over 10 years. So it's not that I don't miss them. I'm more just like used to being away from them. Um, I miss my sister and my niece and stuff. Um, it was my sister's 40th birthday and I wasn't there for that because I think I'm going to go home for Christmas. So I always knew I wasn't going to go back for that, but it was still just really hard being away from home for that. Um, and then you see people like going to the beach and you see videos from back home and the sky is so blue. Like when I say the sky is blue back home, like it's not blue here. It's like, it's like a different shade of blue. It's like blue gray, gray at best. So um, just things like that. And yeah, I just came to a head the last couple of weeks and I feel like I was actually just sort of putting off this feeling by filling my days with all of this stuff and I, I feel like it's like finally time to kind of deal with these feelings um, and yeah it's been tough and I've you know I reached out to my other um, you know especially Antipodean friends like people who um, are from Australia and New Zealand and I was just like is this normal and they're like yeah like we've all been feeling it it's just you've only just felt it so I'm optimistic, but um, I'm also just like knowing that, you know, it is tough. It's tough being away from home. It's a completely different environment sometimes. And um, yeah, we're all just doing our best. So um, yeah, but otherwise really, really loving it. Really looking forward to um, this turkey trip. And the only last update would be that I am training for a full marathon um, in May. So 5th of May, I'm going to be doing the Prague Marathon. It is my second marathon. The last, uh, sorry, the first one that I did was in 2017, so it's been a while. Um, but I have, or I'm going to have had eight weeks to prepare for it. Um, but I'm feeling really optimistic and I am raising money for the charity that our work um, support so we have a charity that all of our sort of charity efforts throughout the year go towards and that's Anthony Nolan um, it's an amazing cause that um, supports people with blood disorders and blood cancers so if you have made it this far in the video and whether you're watching from the UK or down under in Australia or New Zealand please please consider donating I have a goal of 500 pounds um, I'm very close to making it, um, but if I surpass, uh, but if I surpass it, I'm going to be extremely stoked. It's just really, really great cause that we love to support, and um, yeah, it's 42 kilometers, and I would really, really love your support. So I have linked my um, just giving page below. Please, please donate. Every um, pound, every Australian dollar, every New Zealand dollar, every US dollar counts. Um, whatever currency it is, please consider donating. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm going to finish off this vlog here because I have to finish uh, packing. But maybe if, uh, if you'd like to see like a room tour of my next place, um, as well as sort of an update on, on how I went over the Easter holiday. Um, yeah, I'll see how I feel. I'll see if I have time and if it's of any 
kind of interest my room might be super boring so we'll see how we go but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time